How's it going YouTube? Open Poker James here. So today we're going to be looking at a Spin and Go Max review. A player over on our Discord called No Wasted Effort has sent in the review this time. They've asked to have their name uh, hidden, which is fine. I'm completely fine with that. Uh, they're playing $3 Spin and Go Maxes. They've got a HUD. I can't really read it. The stats are too small. But I think we can still get a few good things out of it. Um, this one is a five-handed spin and go max with two people paid. So let's jump in and see what it's like. Okay, so we've got a five-handed spin and go max. Um, we do have some labels on our, some of these opponents. Now, spin and go max has a smaller player pool in general than regular spins. Uh, so I guess we will be facing similar opponents a little bit more often. Um, okay, we've already got something interesting for the first hand. When it comes to the HUD stats, I can't read any of them, so I won't be able to say too much about these spots. But um, raising bigger than a min raise is not a standard play in spinning goes. It's not a standard play uh, short stacked. Uh, it's not a standard play in high ICM spots um but one thing i do know about spin and go maxes is that it has some of the fishiest player pools you can imagine and you can get loads of very wide calls even for a larger sizing so i don't mind the race size honestly i think it's okay um, as long as you're only doing it with very strong hands as long as your range is all the same doing it for 2.45 bbs uh, so I would be raising something like fives or sixes and better. I'd be raising um, all the Broadway hands apart from maybe Jack 10 and Queen 10 off. Off suit. Uh, I'd be raising a few suited connector type hands. Maybe 9-8 suited, maybe 8-7 suited. Uh, and then all of the suited ace type hands. Uh, maybe ace nine off as well maybe but yeah if you're making this larger sizing it's because you're expecting a people behind you to call like very often so if you're doing this maybe not raising ace nine because ace nine is very hard to play in multi-way pots anyway make the call raise with ace nine you don't actually get any callers uh, other than maybe the big blind. So what I would say here is maybe min raising is better. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I guess you'll find out in the future. Like you do want them to make really bad calls. So if you're min raising and you've got this strong range and your opponent in the button calls you with king five off and then your opponent in the small blind calls you with queen seven off and then the big blind calls with random crap. That's not a bad thing. Honestly, that's not a bad thing. Um, it might mean that you don't win as often in those pots, but because they got bad ranges, it, they're gonna get themselves in very tough, horrible spots. Often where they've got top pair and out kickered by someone else. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, you've got a, opponent three times the big blind raise. Uh, generally that's enough of a mark for me to say they're a recreational player once there's only two people behind it plays almost like a spin and go so when you raise that kind of sizing um, there's very little reason to do that so yeah I would make the mark there we've got a min raise we've got four or five off so obviously folding uh, from these kind of positions, I would be playing a raise uh, or fold strategy unless I knew the big blind. If I knew the big blind wasn't doing squeezing too much, then we can just flat call some suited connector type hands and some of those suited broadways quite nicely. Um, because this is a two places paid spot, it's actually quite important that we survive to all in mode. So survival is something that you should be considering while you're playing uh, these games, these spin maxes. It means you should be less inclined to just be immediately shoving hands. So hand like ace eight in a regular spin and go would be, wouldn't be such a bad just uh, open shove from the button with two people to act behind. 
But in a spin and go max, you really don't want to do that because um, those last few chips are actually worth quite a lot. So think about it from this perspective. If you're playing spin and go max, you've only got one chip left. There's three of you left. Two people are paid. Uh, all in phase is forced. The next hand, you fold. You got one chip. You win the all in phase and the chip leader wins the side pot. You end up getting second place even though you only got three chips in your stack so very very uh, much worth like trying to keep some chips around so we got ace eight and we make the raise i like it a lot it's the only play that i would do if we face any kind of free bet action i'm gone i'm out of there very fast um yeah so we raise jack six free board and we get bet into for one quarter one fifth pot uh, I would immediately mark them a recreational player I just don't see many regs doing that especially at three dollar limit it might not actually be the worst play in the world it might be something even the solver would think about doing maybe probably not though yeah I would um, mark them recreational and I would be calling here uh, Main reason I'm calling is because I expect my ace high to be good fairly often. Uh, I would be raising here quite often, actually. Let's say I've got a gut shot. Let's say I've got 7-5 suited, for example, uh, or 5-4 suited. Let's say I've got queen 4 or queen 5 of diamonds, hearts, or clubs. Those kind of hands, or even actually spades. Those kind of hands I would like raising against this bet. But I think ace high is going to be good enough fairly often to just try and go to showdown with it. So that's what I would do. Let's see what you do. Uh, if you are raising here, then you're raising, you are like being unbalanced and raising too much. But we're playing a recreational, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter um, if you're playing unbalanced or not. So I wouldn't say that it's a terrible raise. I just think that you need to be aware that this is uh, this this is an exploit. I personally would play it more passively, but I think the the expected value for both plays is similar. Eight five, we're gonna fold. Just those hands, like the sorry, the ace eight there. I just want to continue. Um, if you are called, you can get yourself in trouble spots because you won't know which ones to carry on shoving, right? So let's say you did raise here with queen four or queen five of hearts, diamonds, or clubs. It's fairly simple to play on the turn. Let's say on the turn you hit the queen. Simple, right? Same with the ace. Simple. But if you, uh, let's say you've got queen five, let's say a four rolls out. Now it's really easy to keep betting put it, or put all the chips in, whatever you want to do, because you've got the uh, open-ended straight draw as backup, even if we're behind. With ace eight, let's say the the turn card is a four or a five. We've only got ace eight. We still only have ace eight. Um, let's say a queen comes out or a king comes out. Are these hands we should be bluffing or not? Like we can be making some really big mistakes. So that's another reason why I wouldn't raise here. It just puts yourself in a spot where you might make a compounding mistake and uh, that's not good. Micro stakes and low stakes is all about avoiding those spots where you make big mistakes. Uh, all of the people who move up and get out of those games are generally people who have a just a fair, st solid strategy. Um, they're focusing on, on what's important, right? Wow, okay, this is a really interesting spot, actually. Um, so we got some stats on them. I can't read them. They're just too small for me to read. So I will go readless here. But you already had a label on them. Uh, they're raising very big. I kind of consider this like an all-in. Uh, and I kind of consider it to be a very specific set of hands. When I see spots like this, I think my opponent is raising something like pocket sevens to pocket tens. And then hands like ace-jack off ace queen ace king and the suited varieties as well so against that range do we want to be playing 
with pocket sevens? I would say no. But as soon as you get to pocket eights, pocket nines, you're gonna have to play for stacks. So I think personally, I would just fold here. Doesn't feel great, yes. But I think against the range, you, you, you're just not, not loving life at all. Um, yeah, I think it's just got to be folded. Eights, I think eights is too too strong now. You make the fold. That's a nice fold. I think that's a really good play. Yeah, I wouldn't have like gone at you too hard if you did go all in there. Um, but I think that is a mistake if you did. But you didn't. That's really good. Uh, Ten six off. 12 big blinds deep I would be folding unless we got some info on my opponent the way your mouse was moving and looking at the HUD stacks for me I'm guessing you've got a read on them they're being too tight uh, as a default you don't want to be raising this but if you know they're being too tight make that raise make the small raise I would have just been raised uh, and then you got the fold which is nice But yeah, you don't want to be make, raising that wide unless you've got a, a note on it, on your opponent. 10-6. It's a nice spot to just be folding. Uh, let's say you do know your opponent is, is limping really, really wide. There's loads of random crap. 10-6 is still not strong enough hand to be isolating that limp. Uh, I would want to be doing it with hands that play well, suited connector hands or high card hands still because there are two people like behind us. Uh, they've got king nine off. So if this yellow label doesn't mean they're a recreational player already, you may want to change it to that because that's not going to be a good play. Um, checking it down is probably okay. They're not just randomly clicking buttons post flop. They did. They clearly were aware that King High should be good by the river. Quite often. Anyway, we're chip leading now. This is great. Um, in spin and go max, when you know there's ten hands to go, uh, having the chip lead is good, especially when you're getting to the last few hands. Because if you're the chip leader and you, everyone's forced all in, no matter what happens, after that first round of all in, you will still have chips. So you're way more likely to get first or second place, which is uh, pretty useful, pretty important. Anyway, still early days. We've got a shove and a call, and we fold. Uh, I think the two shove is too wide. I think the ace 10 shove, uh, a call of the shove is probably too wide as well. So, I mean, you've already got a note, uh, a label on your opponent, maybe some hand histories as well. This might be worth noting that they're raising too wide under the gun, um, like shoving too wide. And then the ace 10 call is a bit too wide. I would say from this, I would say they're ICM unaware. Uh, so I'd make that label because um, that's a very important one to know for for spin and go max if someone is ICM aware or not. Uh, if they're not, it means you need to be very cautious around them because if you shove wide because you expect your opponent to not want to gamble and then they gamble, it's bad for both of you, not just for them, but bad for you. So where you make your edge is you tightening up and then Freddy and someone else gambling when they shouldn't be gambling. That's that's how you make your, your edge because you get into the money when you shouldn't have. Okay. So yeah, I would probably make a note about Freddy that they're less likely to be ICM aware. It's not terrible though, calling ace 10. I think it's probably something like ace queen or ace jack off plus. So it's not that bad. Anyway, we're down to four. 
and we're no longer the big stack. Um, we've got eight hands to go. We're all fairly similar size stack. Uh, queen seven here I would be shoving. Um, even though we know Freddy might be calling a little bit wider, queen seven is, is a, a nice hand here, especially if Hist is aware of ICM pressures. Uh, we make the fold. I think that's a small mistake. I think you should be trying to build up some chips. If you know both opponents behind you are just calling too wide, then yeah, make that fold. But I think that was a shoving spot. We've got seven hands to go now. So we've got to start really looking at what kind of stack sizes are we trying to get here? We've got um, basically all four of us are similar stack size. So for now, it's a bit of jostling between who can get what place. Obviously, going into all in phase as a chip leader is good. Um, obviously, going in as the shortest stack isn't good unless you've only got like a few chips lying around. Because you have to win the all in phase to get any money. Anyway, 8-5 suited, we're going to be folding against the shove. Not really any other way to play that. Um, King-10 and King-Jack. Not too much to say about that. The King-10 shove was obviously fine. The King-Jack call was close, but I don't think terrible at all. Uh, Jack-5, if it's folded to me, because of what we saw with Freddy calling the ace-10, I'm expecting them to call a little bit too wide. So I'll just be folding here. Um, if I was playing a reg, I'd shove. Expecting them to fold a lot. But yeah, against Freddy, I'd probably fold. Um, we do shove, they do call. Even if you shoved against the reg, the reg would call this. It's a very strong hand. So... It's not it's not a terrible play if if you think that Freddy is a regular player or playing good. I think it's fine. But from what I saw, I think it's much more likely that it's not a good push. But we do win. And now we're what chip leading? Good stuff. Four hands to go and chip leading. So when you're chip leading, just a few hands left, I would say um, you don't really want to be getting into pots because having that lead is definitely valuable, right? We just talked about how if everyone's forced all in, you still have chips left over in the first round. So the likelihood of you cashing goes way up. So yeah, you don't have much of a reason to be playing. Let's say you do go all in and you lose to... Freddy or you lose to Parhan, you've now got hardly any chips left um, and then you'd have to win the all-in phase to get any money. So yeah, you got you need a good, damn good reason to stay in the pot. 3-4 is not a damn good reason, so we're out of there. Freddy's shoving. Parhan calls. Uh, Freddy's shove is okay, Pahan's call is okay, not much to get from that then. Ace Queen takes it. So now we're right off the bubble. We are no longer the chip leader, which isn't great. Um, but we do have one opponent who's very, very short, which is good. So let's see what we do now. Um, we're hoping that they bust before all in phase. Okay, so now we're in a spot where we're playing against the big stack. Really, Pahan should have been shoving on you um, because you have to be very tight trying to wait for this person to bust. But that didn't happen. So you got to see a free flop. You've hit a uh, bottom pair, um, which is tough actually to play, <laughs> I have to say. Let's say your opponent bets here. You probably need to call at least one street. But uh, for the most part, 
really you're looking at it from perspective of you need this guy to bust before you can start playing back against Parhan. Uh, they've checked to you. My play here would be trying to get the showdown, maybe calling one street's worth of bets. Uh, if I had an eight or a good four, I would be betting. But yeah, a two. No, no, I'm not betting. Uh, I don't want to open up the action. Let's say I bet and get raised. I'm going to have to fold and I've just put more chips in the pot. And then, um, yeah, just giving away chips. Whereas gaining chips isn't doesn't give you too much here. But busting is really bad for you. So, yeah. Uh, five free off, I would be folding for sure. Them shoving is amazing for us. I think they played this very, very badly. Um, let's say they end up losing this pot. They still have 1.35 big blinds left. Um, yeah, even with twos, no. No, no, no. You want to see a flop with your twos. And they win. Yeah, when you got twos and then you see this flop, because you got the flush draw and a pair, no way out. But let's say the board was like six, seven, eight, <laughs> right? You can end up folding even though you got one big blind left. But yeah, uh, all in phase, we're second in chips, which is okay. Um, as long as you win or Pahan wins, you will get uh, first or second place money. So that's good. We've got seven five, hit the seven, nice. Does it hold? It does hold. So now you just gotta win the last few chips from Pahan. And then we can talk, start talking about box picking strategy. Um, so for me, I use Discord or Twitch. Uh, we got a bot called Nightbot. And I type exclamation mark pick in there. And uh, it shows me how much, uh, which box to pick. That's that's my box picking strategy. It's not great. I don't know if you guys have seen my other spin and go max videos of all the big multipliers. They didn't go well. <laughs> So maybe I need to refine that strategy. But yeah, it's meant to be random. Uh, I spoke to the head of product at PokerStars that just said it's random. Um, you're picking the right box. Okay, what box would I pick? Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna use Nightbot. So I'm gonna do that now. Nightbot says right as well. So Nightbot is with you on right box. 4, 4, 19. Easy game. That's how you do it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, if you like this Spin and Go Max content, please give me uh, or give the video a like and uh, hit the subscribe button. Comment if you want anything sp specific Spin Max wise. Um, at the moment, I've been doing mostly regular spin and goes, especially with this Tetris promotion. But uh, I do often play spin and go max. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. We do have a Discord that has all sorts of spin and go max um, content going on, including memes. So if you uh, want to get in on that, make sure you come join our Discord channel. Um, yeah, apparently it's mostly memes at the moment. <laughs> But there is some strategy being talked over there as well. Anyway, hope to see you in there. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.